Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much. I have been so honored and blessed all through our short time here. It's been from glory to glory. And I want to start by saying a very big thank you. Thank you to the coordinator. And can you give him a big, 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 big hand clap? And all who have been um, part of my stay with you here in Dallas, thank you so much. I believe that the Lord himself is going to be glorified in and through our lives this morning. And you have come, but let your heart be truly open. I was so inspired listening to Pastor Emmanuel share and the, the profound truths that he said. It's possible that God is in a place, but then you can come and just return the same way you came. I will go back, can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I will go back, can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I will go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Father, we thank you because we know that you will bless us by your power and by your grace. You will do wonders in our midst. You are the powerful God. I pray that you move in a mighty way. Halagbara, you are the mighty God. Hey, Latobiju, you are the glorious God. Halagbara, you are the mighty God. Hey, Latobiju. You are the glorious God. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the Honor. Take all the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank so in you. my life, in my, my life, life, lift your hands, be, be glorified. glorified, be glorified. God, you are my God, 
Jesus, when you make up your mind to submit like you have been taught to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, believe me when I tell you, your life will only be a sign and a wonder, a sign and a wonder. This is what he does with and to them that fear him. This is what he does with and to them that love him. Did the Bible not say no eye has seen? It says no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. That which God has in store, not just for believers, but for them that love him. We have a brief final session and I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ that something from heaven will rest upon someone's life. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated if you can. And then may I request that you lend me your attention, please. Hallelujah. Psalm 89 and verse 20. I want to show you a very powerful scripture. This it's a miracle service. I believe it also doubles as an impartation service where we are going to be receiving graces from heaven. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It's more than just touching with oil. It's more than just placing a mantle upon you. You are truly not imparted until spiritual possibilities leads from the career to one who is hungry and determined to receive. Hallelujah. But I want to show you a very powerful spiritual law. By now you know the value of empowerment. We have considered it all through my sessions in this conference. We spoke about salvation, an encounter with Jesus. We spoke about transformation. The process that makes you become like Christ in experience. And then number three, the value of spiritual empowerment. Said a few things yesterday that you will never be able to accomplish the purposes of the kingdom in the strength of the flesh. The Bible says, for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Is it not in your Bible that some trust in horses and others chariots? Do you know how powerful a horse is? Do you know how dexterous a king's chariot is? Yet the Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. And so, I understand a bit about spiritual empowerment. I know what it means to be anointed I know what it means to find power with God. There's no time to discuss with you my journey into the ministry of power and the miraculous, but I will tell you, I want to share with you one lesson I have found. I have watched people pray sincerely so for power. I have watched people fast sincerely so for power. I've watched people cry. I've watched people carry seeds to a man of God for power. And all these are powerful principles. 
And yet at the end of all these spiritual activities, they never seem to contact genuine spiritual power. And for many years I kept asking, what could be wrong? What is wrong with a man fasting so much, desiring the power of God? What is wrong with a man praying for extended periods, desiring the power of God? What is wrong with using your seed as an expression of honor to connect to an anointing? Why then is my life still bankrupt of genuine spiritual empowerment, even after all of these activities? And then the Lord took me through a journey, and that journey ended in one single verse. Please listen very carefully, especially for many of you who have the call of God upon your life. This might be a deliverance service for you. Otherwise, for many people, they would labor in the spirit only to be angry after many years. That's why several people get angry and offended at God and at church. They say, if it's prayer, I have prayed. If it's fasting, I have fasted. I've done everything I know to do to access genuine power from God. But what then is the missing link? Let me show you Psalm 89 and verse 20. May I please request, if you can, that you turn your Bible or just find a way of connecting to that scripture. Your devices, whatever it is that you have to use, I just want you to look at that scripture very carefully. Psalm 89. That scripture holds the key. Verse 20. You have that down? I'm reading from KJV. So if you have KJV, I want us to read the first four words that you see there. I have found David. Ready? One to read. I have found David. Hold on. One more time. I have found David. I have found David. Now read with me the next two words. My servant. So if we read it all together, it reads, I have found David, my servant. This is a very profound scripture. David was a man who understood the anointing from a shepherd. He transited until he became a king and a very noble one. Hallelujah. That in Israel today, they consider the city of David, the star of David in fact, is imprinted upon their flags. This was a man who did business with God until he became mighty. But there is a very profound secret here. And this is what I want to show you. He said, I have found David. But the anointing will not come upon David. I am looking for my servant. I found David a long time ago. But the anointing is not looking for David. The anointing does not come upon David. The anointing comes upon my servant. I have found Joshua Selman, but I'm still looking for my servant. I have found the preacher, but I'm still looking for my servant. I found a businessman, but I'm still looking for my servant. So he says, I have found David. No problem finding David. No problem finding Jacob. No problem finding Gideon, but I'm still searching for my servant. The oil does not look for men. The oil looks for a heart condition. Listen carefully. The anointing does not look for men. The anointing was authorized to respond to a certain heart posture, a certain heart condition that no matter what the geography of your call is, if you do not assume that posture in the spirit, you cannot be genuinely anointed. I have found David, but I'm still looking for my servant. I found a very vibrant man of God in Dallas, but I'm still looking for my servant. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, when you read from verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. My question is, why will he have to relate the death of someone or something to an encounter with the Lord. He would have just said, 
I saw the Lord. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my ego died, I saw the Lord. In the year that lust died, I saw the Lord. In the year that spiritual complacency died, I saw the Lord. The price for seeing him and encountering him is not just searching for him. It's killing what has tried to be him. Listen carefully. The jealousy of God mandates that he becomes Lord absolutely in your life. So if he has to join the queue with a plethora of other mundane flesh attributes like pride, vain glory and the rest, you will never be able to find and even host his glory. Is someone learning already? I have found David. I have found Isaac. I have found the businessman. I have found the sincere pastor, the apostle, the evangelist. But I'm still looking for my servant. And he can be looking for his servant for 10 years. He can be looking for his servant for 20 years. He can even be looking for a servant for your entire lifetime. Apostle, why has the anointing not come upon my life in spite of my prayer? Because you have not allowed that prayer to turn you from David into his servant. Why has my fasting not produced results? Because the fasting has not been allowed to turn you from David to his servant. I have found David my servant. I used to think that the anointing looks for men. But I found out from scripture that the anointing does not necessarily look for men. The anointing was designed to pursue a particular heart condition, a particular posture. In this case, a heart that the Bible simply calls my servant. Do you know what it takes to be the servant of God? Now, many people erroneously, because of the revelation of concepts like sonship, uh, when you talk about servanthood, uh, people generally frown at it because they say, no, I'm not a servant, I'm a son. But when you study your Bible properly, you will learn that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Who although being God, that he considered it not robbery to be God, but he humbled himself. So Jesus demonstrated that he was a son indeed by becoming a servant. Are we together? I have found David my servant many of you have come to receive from the Lord you have come to receive from the Lord as say an intelligent entrepreneur and that's wonderful you have come to receive from the Lord as a man of God a businessman a career man or woman I have a very disturbing message for you the anointing is not looking for a man of God the anointing is not looking for a career person the anointing is not looking for a businessman. The anointing is looking for my servant. What does it take to be a servant of God? There are two biblical requirements to be called a servant of God. Let me give it to you very quickly. Number one is found in... Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. The Bible says, and I read, And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You shall seek me. That means if you claim to be seeking me and you do not find me, a part of your heart lied to you. That it is only when all of you is in pursuit of me that you will find me. Listen carefully. There are many people who will tell you, I am seeking the Lord. I want to know him. And that may be sincere. But there is a law. It's called the law of encounter. That you will only seek me and truly find me when you search for me with all your heart. 
the personality who represents encounters in scripture is the man Jacob. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 28 when you read that Jacob came to a place called Luz and he lay there to sleep at night and he lay upon a stone and the Bible says he had a vision of the night and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens. Am I right on that? And he saw angels ascending and descending. Is it not amazing that all kinds of spiritual activities were happening there and yet there was no encounter? It did not impact on Jacob's life. When he woke up, he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this must be the gate of heaven, even the house of God. Watch this. Jacob misused that opportunity because his heart was not prepared. Now, when you study your Bible, the next phase of, jo of Jacob's life will be about 20 years of misery and pain in the house of Laban. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 32, another opportunity comes now. This time around, he was a wealthy man. He had his wives. He had all kinds of things. And here's what the Bible says. He dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle. The Bible says when he was alone. Can you just play the keyboard for me? Just, just flow, just something. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he was alone, when he dropped the certificate aside and said, thank you, but I want to seek who is higher and greater than you. When you drop the ambitions and everything, the Bible says when Jacob was alone, there came a man one more time. You missed it in chapter 28. Now let's see how prepared you are. Whether you have now become my servant. And the Bible says when Jacob was alone. At that point nothing else mattered. At that point it was not his wives again. At that point it was not his cattle. Not his wealth. Not his ego. Not the battle between him and Esau. Those things became petty. His attention and his gaze was on that encounter. And the Bible says he held on to him. And he said leave me. For the day breaketh, he said, I will not let you go. I know the consequence of letting you go. I misused that opportunity in chapter 28. And 20 years of my life went down as a result of the absence of your presence and your power. I will not let you go. I rather let every other thing go. I rather let my ego go. I rather let my ambition go because I know that when I have you, I have every other thing. He says, leave me for the day breaking. I am showing you the protocol to be genuinely anointed until everything that supposedly carries value in your life bows to the Lordship of the King. You will never genuinely be anointed. I show you why our generation continues to search for power. Sometimes in vain. Because we carry the mundane luggages of all kinds of things. And then we just hope to add God to the luggage. No. Leave me for the day breaketh. You have your wives. You have your cattle. You are rich. And he said no. I have come to a point where I realize that my life outside of you, even in the midst of all that I have, is vanity. And then he said, all right, let the transition process begin. What is your name? How does God bless a man by talking about his name, not his situation? What is your name? Your name, your identity. A representation of your value a summation of everything that your life had been what is your name I know you are a professor he's asking you because he wants to change your name what is your name I'm an intelligent person by my strength I am the leading expert in my company but what is your name the, the anointing is looking for a certain posture it says I am Jacob it says thou shall no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have contended you have power with God and yet you have prevailed now watch what God calls the blessing for many years I read that scripture and it disturbed me here's how Jacob came to God 
Here's how he returned. How does a man come to meet God whole and return back incomplete? And the Lord said, that is how I bless. Is it not in your Bible? <laughs> that a man encounters God and he says, you want to carry my grace? I will have to touch that point of strength in your life that makes you sufficient without me. So that forever there will be an indication in your life that without me he can do nothing. I'm showing you what it takes to be called the servant of God. It is beyond just wearing a nice suit. It is beyond just holding a mic and being called a pastor. There is a process in the spirit. I tell you, I saw it's a very strong anointing here. This, my people, you're going to have to help me here. Eh? Can you look for strings for me and just, just, just flow? You are in for an experience within the next few minutes that we have here. Listen, because I believe that among the people seated here, there are some of you, the mantle, listen, this is not just, don't shout amen yet, the mantle of your destiny has been searching for you. But you see, it's not looking for an expert. It's not looking for an ambitious man of God who wants a crowd. No, I have found, help them please. I have found, help them, the anointing of the spirit is moving now already. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Help them. I have found David. But I'm looking for my servant. Please bring them out. Just bring them out gently in front here. I have found David. But I'm looking for my servant. I have found the musician. But I'm looking for my servant. I'm not just talking about a good voice to sing. Please make sure they are not injured. Just drop them somewhere in front there. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. Listen to me. When you come to God, that celebrity mindset of wanting to use the anointing to be famous, you will never find the anointing that way. The anointing is for servants, not just celebrity. But strangely so, the anointing will so lift you and cause the nations to celebrate God in your life. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen, I came with a mantle and an anointing this morning to stir up a fire, to stir up a fire, to stir up a fire upon your spirit, man. I have found David. I have found David. You provide the fire. Listen to the song. I'll provide the sacrifice. He doesn't provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. Please get something to cover them so that you don't expose me. Now I will open up inside. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Listen, man of God, it is not that God cannot lift you to become a mighty vessel, it is that this pride that is hidden behind I just want to be anointed so that when I heal the sick they will say Joshua Selman is a great man you will never find God that way listen to me when you get to a place of repentance genuine brokenness where there is nothing else to be seen that you hide behind the cross and your desire is for Jesus to be seen more than an ambition more than the desire for fame more than the desire to be famous that my desire is to see Jesus exalted across the nations now you have become my servant I have found David to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory 
Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you. That lady wearing blue. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. That lady wearing blue is a new season for your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, for you will never be the same again. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Cry unto God from the depth of your heart. Listen, hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The first prayer we are going to pray is a genuine prayer of repentance. Lord, every pride, every flesh, everything hidden within my heart, I bring it to the throne and I cry that you show me mercy. Purify my heart, purify my motif, purify my desires. Please open your mouth and pray. Purify my heart. I have found David. God has found you, but he's looking for his servant. God has found a musician, but he's looking for a worshiper. God has found a preacher, but he's looking for a vessel. God has found a businessman, but he's looking for a financial apostle. Make sure you are praying. Don't be distracted. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You just focus on this prayer. The miraculous becomes easy when your heart is true and sincere. Exalted I above the worship of the people of the earth. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. For my eyes have seen the King. You're the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forevermore. Go ahead and pray. Porch my heart. Porch my heart. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It says, but in a great house, there are all kinds of vessels, some unto honor, some unto dishonor. It says, if a man will purge himself, if a man will purge himself, Jacob, you can become Israel if you purge yourself. That man becomes a vessel of honor, meat for the master's use. If someone pray, take everything. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender to you everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Will you give yourself away?
Purposes eternally. I simply call it Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. That that becomes the theme of your life, whether in business, whether in ministry, whether in family, that your entire life revolves around this theme to see Jesus revealed and to see Jesus glorified. When conditions are met you have become the servant of God I have found David but I found him with all kinds of lusts and flesh and, and disorganization just wanting to use the anointing to promote an ambition it doesn't come that way David become my servant by submitting to the governing authority of Jesus and then having a new creed and a new theme that governs your life that my entire life revolves around the revelation and the exaltation of the Christ it doesn't matter whether it is in ministry it doesn't matter whether it's in politics that I'm here to promote the interests of heaven listen to me ladies and gentlemen when you assume that posture in the spirit you have become his servant you are ready to become like a trophy that he will display to the nations and show men the excellency of what it means to carry genuine power can I tell you when you study your Bible and when you study modern history history is full of men and women who though ordinary they became servants of God indeed and certain mantles and graces came upon their lives you study men like Catherine and women like Catherine Kuhlman you talk about it right here in your soil great men and women and today in our world men like fathers fathers of faith like our very father Baba Deboe and our mother they speak may you be blessed and you see doors open it is not just in the words there is a covenant there is blood that is dripping on that altar a testament of death a testament of sacrifice now the nations are waiting for the revelation of God that will come through your life you are here gathered hear me the Holy Spirit is speaking to you do not allow destinies go down because of carelessness do not allow destinies connected to you to go down hear me imagine if there were never a Billy Graham imagine if there were never a Baba Deboye imagine if there were never a Reinhard Bonke do you know how many people would have gone to hell now it is your turn are you going to allow flesh are you going to allow flesh to lead you down while destinies are destroyed or will you rise up will you rise up and say Lord as far as I'm concerned count on me you can count on me with the destiny of nations open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray something is about to fall in this place mm. man of God pray preachers pray it's time to carry genuine power the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God it's time for every altar and every pulpit to carry genuine fire genuine fire America hear me God wants to restore fire authentic fire 
fire that leads to souls saved, fire that leads to lives transformed. Someone is praying. Forget about who is at your left and right. Focus on Jesus and cry from the depth of your spirit. servant in business a witness an ambassador in politics in education in family someone pray someone pray for some of you your family members are depending on your transformation and your empowerment Always hunger for oh, our hearts always hunger for now. Listen, everyone, listen to me. Please lend me your attention. Lend me your attention. I shared yesterday that there are two ways to receive the power of God. Number one is directly from God through encounters. Help a lady who begins to run now and shout under the anointing. Please make sure that they don't injure themselves, whether you're an usher or not. Hallelujah. Watch this. Number two, the second way to receive is through impartation and I told you this morning that impartation is a transference of possibilities that when God anoints a man he intends for that anointing to reach everyone who is hungry and ready to receive not just for one person to hold it and merchandise it unfortunately are we together now hear me we are going to get straight into the miracle service that is already on. There are three things that will happen here as my assignment this morning. Number one is an impartation that is already ongoing. Number two, I'm going to be praying for the sick and that includes every oppression, whatever it is. You can stand in for yourself and stand in for your loved ones. Believe me when I tell you by God and upon the grace that is on our Father, there is no devil against your destiny that will remain after this encounter. You will marvel and wonder at the power of God. And then number three, prophetically, we are going to pray over our families and all the issues of concern and lift up a cry to heaven when we're done and ask the Lord to visit us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen, I want to pray. I ask the people to come out not just for a show. There is a reason why I ask. Now, I'm going to make three requests. Number one, whether you are an usher or not, if someone is under the anointing close to you, as much as you are receiving for yourself, please do well to manage them so they don't injure themselves. Are we together? And then eventually, so that we do not have this place becoming so chaotic, 
we may need to ask one or two of you to please volunteer and help when the time is needed. So please do avail yourself if there's need to manage people. This is not just some misbehavior of people. There are many things happening to those you see under the anointing. There are deliverances, there are healings, there are breakthroughs, and there are impartations. Now I want to pray for you. Many years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. And when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, many of you may have heard it in my encounters. He stretched his hand towards me. And when he stretched his hand towards me, light at its brilliance left his majesty, Jesus, and entered into me. Listen, how I survived is something that is mysterious. You cannot receive that kind of life. Now, unfortunately, and I say this respectfully, today, many claim to have seen Jesus. Many claim to even spend all the time with him, but we cannot see that evidence of a genuine encounter. Go and read your Bible. It took me more than one year to recover from that encounter. I was not myself again. The world became like a foreign place. But in another encounter, the Lord spoke to me. Please listen. He said to every city and to every nation and every region I will send you to, in every meeting, there must be someone in that meeting that the light that came from me to you, that that light must rest upon the person. That is why you see all of these manifestations. It doesn't necessarily make us anything it is not some celebrity man of God. This is not what we are here to do. We are here to reveal Jesus. But I'm telling you that you are immersed in a cloud of glory right now. And as I begin to pray for you, I'm going to be releasing grace from heaven to rest upon you. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, everyone here, who has the call of God upon his life that God has called you to serve in the ministry I release grace upon you now take that fire 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 America I bring you the fire of revival authentic apostolic revival take that fire Take that fire, take that fire, let it burn in your spirit, let it burn in the churches, let it burn in your homes, let it burn in the hospital, let it burn in the school. Take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The call of God upon your life is time for that evangelistic call to find expression. It's time for that pastoral call. There are some of you who are called to be intercessors. There are many women here, like Anna the prophetess. May that grace come upon you. Intercessors, intercessors, men of fire, women of fire, men of fire, women of fire, men of fire, women of fire, men of fire. Women of fire. I want to pray right now. I believe that there are people here who will become end time financial apostles. Men who will be trusted with the wealth of nations. I don't know where you are, but I stretch my hands. May that mantle of a kingdom financier, let it come upon you. Men who will sponsor the gospel. Men who will sponsor the gospel. Empowered by grace. Empowered by God. Hallelujah. Now hear me. 
very quickly if you are in this place and you are trusting God for a healing any part of your body or you are trusting God for a loved one now is the time to be healed I want you to place your hand right at the point you are trusting God for a miracle if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest standing for your loved ones standing for yourself don't doubt don't doubt believe I want to pray holy 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 are you Lord Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. Lay your hands. I want to pray for you now. Jesus. Something special, supernatural about your name, Jesus. Something happens when I mention. Hear me, I'm about to pray for you now. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. As soon as I pray, healings are already taking place. I'm going to ask a few of you who have received a miracle. Let's have maybe one of the pastors, maybe Pastor Emmanuel or so. Let's have one or two of the pastors. So that as soon as you receive a miracle, they will just direct you. We'll have one or two testimonies. Let's shame the devil here at this campground and let the devil know that the RCCG youth and the church even of young people and believers in America is still strong and alive and that Jesus will forever be glorified now lay your hands as I pray shout a loud amen as I pray in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every devil of infirmity I stand upon the grace of our father and the grace of Jesus Christ and I declare every spirit that is behind every infirmity in the name of Jesus be gone now be gone now be gone now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name be healed ah, Shabakato Seketa. be healed in Jesus name there's someone God is healing your arm your right arm severe pains the power of God is touching you now right now right now in the name of Jesus right now the Lord is showing me someone you have severe pains around your neck area. You can't even sleep on one side because of the pain. Right now in the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you. The power of God is touching you. Every growth in your body, I command it to disappear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I just saw like a sword of fire. And the Lord is saying he's delivering two people from depression. This is an acute state of depression. I command that spirit of depression. Leave them now. Leave them now. Leave them now. Out of their destinies in the name of Jesus. Now I decree and declare 
every blood condition be healed now blood conditions be healed now migraine headaches be healed now every bone condition pains around your joints be healed in the name of Jesus there's someone having severe back pain in fact you can't bend very properly it's, it's excruciating right now I decree and declare the power of God is touching you right where you are touching you right where you are I'm seeing someone your molars there's there's severe pain around your molars the Lord is healing you right now the Lord is healing you right now eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be healed now The Lord is asking me to pray for someone I think it's like your elder sister is suffering from cancer they diagnose her of cancer in the name of Jesus I don't know where that person is but by the power that raised Christ from the dead no matter what stage we reverse it now cancer be healed I hope you know that you are standing in for your loved ones there are various stations there are hospitals who are praying in the name of Jesus there's someone who has excruciating chest pain it looks like ulcer in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you now touching you now inability to sleep inability to sleep you lie down on the bed but you are not able to sleep max one hour and that's it in the name of Jesus I release you from that oppression now hear me anyone here called barren unable to be with child or for your loved ones who are connected in the name of Jesus Christ by reason of this miracle service according to the time of life by this time next year they return with their children by by this time next year they return with their children by this time next year they return with their children hallelujah the Lord is showing me someone you have severe pain around this is my right eye severe pain you can see but it comes with severe pain the power of God is touching you right now wherever you are the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ a lady you're having like a lump around the left area of your breast in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you we cause that devil from your body we cause that devil from your body the Lord is healing two ladies I'm seeing from severe bleeding this is what I'm seeing severe bleeding the power of God is going to come upon one of you and I declare that that satanic oppression I don't care how long it has been severe bleeding I'm seeing the Lord bring it to an end right now shout aloud amen in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is asking me to minister to someone that every time you go to bed you keep seeing dead people people who have long gone you keep seeing dead people the Bible says what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness what communion has darkness has to do with light in the name of Jesus I severe that connection everything that connects you to the dead I declare in the name of Jesus you are delivered now 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 in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus be healed now there's someone you have diabetes sugar diabetes the power of God is touching you now I'm seeing healing for diabetes in the name of Jesus I cause every devil my God I just had the sound of chains chains I want to pray every chain holding anyone down I declare at the count of three shout Jesus one two 
check yourself for those under the anointing and for those who are standing the moment you find out there are so many miracles happening here the moment you find there's a miracle I'd like you to boldly leave your seat just come to Pastor Emmanuel they'll just have a word with you and then we'll allow you okay there are two pastors here there's another pastor people are coming out are you celebrating them look what Jesus is doing check yourself you find there's a miracle make your way to the front very quickly Every pain, do what you couldn't do before. Come on, America, is this how you celebrate miracles? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Make your way out, come. For someone here, the same way you saw the power of God move today, may that be what follows your ministry. May that be what follows your ministry. Perfect day, the Bible declares. One more prayer point. Say, Father. One more time, Father. In the name of Jesus, I declare a restoration of everything I have lost. Finances, relationships. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Command a restoration. And I will restore unto you the years is someone praying I will restore I will restore are you declaring restoration and I will restore the years In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, um, before you sit down, the Lord is showing me somebody, um, not to get you emotional, but it's like I'm seeing someone and then I'm not seeing the person again. Is it a baby that died or something? It's like there was a loss. Um, whether you lost a baby. Who is that person? Come. Your baby, your mother. You lost your mother. When? Yesterday. It's 13 years today. Oh, okay, okay, I see. The person I'm talking about, you lost your child. You... I did. I was pregnant, like, from last year. I lost the baby in February. Oh, you lost the baby. Listen, I'm not calling you to embarrass you, eh? This is, this is so that...
because you are going to receive double I'm calling you up do you believe in the power of God don't cry madam this woman lost her child oh my god don't cry you see look at me ladies and gentlemen many of you may never understand the pain of losing a child losing a loved one sir don't cry my dear sister don't cry you see if this is the reason why God allowed for this meeting it was worth it to be able to speak first the message of love even before power the Bible says to comfort those who mourn in Zion so even in Zion there can be people who mourn some of you are crying right now but I want to pray for you we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh Lord we look to Yahweh Yahweh forever Yahweh Yahweh now let me pray for you listen for those of you who lost your children I want to pray for you remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold I do a new thing I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus every couple here that has lost a baby or has lost you know in pregnancy or whatever it is in the name of Jesus first may the Lord comfort you and every spirit of untimely death as I'm praying for them I'm praying for someone here every spirit of untimely death hear the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus release God's people now release God's people now no one under the sound of my voice will die before your time and as I pray for you I pray for your children as I pray for you I pray for your family members where is that believer shout a loud amen now in the name of Jesus for those who, has, who have lost loved ones may my God comfort you the Holy Spirit is called a comforter may you be deeply comforted in the name of Jesus and for those who are trusting God by the way how many of you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb don't come just lift your hands my God will surprise you because I, I, I sense that anointing as I was praying and I want to release that grace now you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb you don't have to come out I will pray for you aside those who are here already just place your hand on your stomach as a sign of sir you and your wife I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I pray for everyone here trusting God for the fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus the son of the living God as Eli prophesied to Hannah as Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead no matter how long you have been without a child by this time next year return with your miracle by this return with your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ no matter what the medical condition is in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead we bring you life we bring you healing in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ this man help that woman the power of God is resting on her I'm seeing something move from her stomach is over right now name of Jesus Christ all forever may the Lord bless you please return to your seats rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ can we take a few testimonies please be seated for a few minutes and let's rejoice over these miracles yes pastor um, you, you said you had stroke yes. so I, I suffered can you just okay yes yes my, my name is Valerie let's settle for a moment and then hear these testimonies and then we're still going to pray I'm still going to prophesy over your life yes go ahead sir so I suffered a stroke can you help us with a, a volume on the sound someone yes on the mic now so my, my name is Valerie yes I suffer from a stroke you suffered from stroke 
Yes, on the 31st of December. Medically verified? Yes. For how long? Uh, it's six months now. Six months. This hand could not raise up. Your hand could not raise up. So Lift it up now. Look at this. Lift it up. Bring it down. Lift it up. Bring it down. America, is this how you celebrate miracles? Look at this. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Yes, please. I was, my name is Jane Ogengi. I, I suffer from depression. From, from back, depression? From back pain, lower back pain. Lower back pain. Insomnia, no sleep. I no sleep. sleep? Yes, I couldn't sleep. What couldn't you do before? Huh? Oh. And now I can sleep. Now I'm happy with my mom. She took me here. Your mom now, is here with you. Mm -hmm. Mom, where is mom? Blessings of grace She's been praying in the name for, of she's Jesus been praying Christ. For me to sleep, and now I can sleep very peacefully. And now I can. Now I'm happy. And now I don't have any pain in my back. Any pain? No check. Pain. No pain. Any pain? Bend no down. Pain. Up. No pain. Any pain? No pain. Down. Up. No pain. No pain. no pain. In the name of Jesus, we declare perfection for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Give her a big hand clap. You ready? Yes. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Favor, and before I wasn't feeling as whole, but now I feel very whole. We're feeling, come again? I feel very whole. Like, very. I feel different, like very, very whole. Oh, I see. May God bless you. Let's give her a big hand clap in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Tracy Moore. Um, in 2018, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia and depression. 2018? Yes. You were diagnosed with? Schizophrenia and uh -huh. depression. So um, I've, been, I've been on medications, but after when, while we were praying, my head started moving, twitching, and I just started moving. And right out. now? Right now, I'm, I can think clearly, and I'm sound. Come on, give Jesus yes. praise. Give Jesus praise. Yes, Mom. My name is Frida. A week ago, I was sleeping during the afternoon. I saw a very large... I'm not sure. Wait, my, my apologies. My name yeah. is Frida. Yes. I was sleeping a week ago in you the afternoon. You were sleeping a week ago. I, I, was in, I took a nap in the afternoon a week yes. ago. And I saw a dark, big cloud. And you saw this, a dark cloud? A dark what cloud. What happened? Overhead. And that dark cloud was like boxing, like thunder, but there was no rain coming down it was like uh, and what happened now when you prayed uh, i f i feel light completely yes that demonic occurrence will never repeat itself again Amen. in the name of jesus christ yes please my name is rose i've been suffering from a breast lump you've been suffering from breast lump breast lump yes. everything go away i've been suffering from a lower body look at this as a laboratory person I hear the library answer. I'm not sure we can. When you start talking about a chi, you started moving from around me. It's like I want you to chi. Check yourself okay. now. I'm okay now. Completely. Completely. I thank God. Give Jesus a big, big hand clap. Yes, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Paula. And for over a year now, I've been suffering from demonic oppression. I was attacked in my dreams. And I felt. For over a year, I felt like spirits just moving around me and I, can, I can't sleep. I just, wherever I go, I feel oppressed and like that. There are things all around me and following me around. But today while we were praying, I felt the spirit leave me. Completely. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Uh, let's see. Let's see how many we can squeeze in within the next time. Um... Praise the Lord. My name is Busaya. Um, for the past couple of years, I've been suffering from migraines and pain in my molars. Migraine? And pain in my back molars, but as of today, the migraines have stopped and the pain in my teeth are gone. The pain? Yes. You are the lady with the pain? Yes. It's gone now. Yes. Give Jesus praise. Um, Hallelujah. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. In 2018, I had a very bad accident somewhere. You had an accident? Yes, in Nigeria. I broke a lot of my ribs, my sternum. My skin got ripped apart, lots of stuff happened. Um, I came back and they told me that my ribs were fine. They will never heal or mend. They will always be choppy. But what I didn't realize, I was wheezing. And every time I go to the doctor and I sing, but so the wheezing, it would just continue and whatever. Before you prayed for healing, I was already down. And I felt the rib, one of something, 
moved even before you started talking. So when you said check to see what was going on, I did this. Go ahead. And the wheezing is gone. There's Come no on, more. Jesus. Give Jesus a big, 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 big hand clap. Never to return again. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Good morning. My name is Adi Jake Agbaje. I've been suffering from depression and um, insomnia since 2014. But as you are praying, the anointing fell upon me and I declare healing in Jesus' name. Completely. Never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's see if we can take two or three here and then... Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Christine Tochi Agnele. I, I suffer with severe period cramps. My... my My healing is, per is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. My pain is gone. In the forever. name of Jesus Christ, I agree with you. That pain, that discomfort is gone and gone forever. Amen. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap for her. Yes, please. My name is Wendy, and I had a really large lump on my breast, and it's significantly smaller after you prayed, but I believe by the time I get to my... Right now. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, perfection for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Never to return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Someone help her. Yes. Let's celebrate Jesus for what he's doing. Praise the Lord. My name is Emmanuel. Um, over a week ago, I noticed a pain on my right shoulder. Pain on your right shoulder? Yes. I uh -huh. can't. Random motions just trigger it, so I don't know how to keep it. While you mentioned it, immediately I checked and I couldn't find it anymore. Completely gone. In the name of Jesus, you're healed forever. Yes. My name is Sylvia. For the past 13 years, there's been something sitting on my back, and when you prayed, it just left. And when I was coming here this morning, I was just fainting on the car. I was just feeling so weak. And when he came here, I just felt so thankful. <laughs> help her, help her, please. Let's, let's have the anointing just stand close to them. Um, some of them are still under the anointing, so praise the Lord. Okay, let's take the last. My name is Anna. I was suffering from neck pain. I used to sleep with the pillow on my neck and lower backache. Last night, when I heard that the man of God is in town, I believed myself and said, it is done. I slept like a baby. And now, the backache is gone. Oh, Blood Jesus pressure, sugar diabetes. My legs were swollen. I'm just checking my Your legs were swollen? Yes, my and legs right were now. swollen. Yes. Now I check my legs, I check my bed. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not sure we're going to be able to take the remaining testimonies, but just stretch your hands towards all who have been healed and just declare perfection for them. Go ahead in one minute for sake of time. We may not be able to take all of the testimonies, but just, just, just give a big hand clap to Jesus for all of these miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, my last assignment within the next one minute before I allow... A pastor to just come take the stage one last call that I want to make very quickly I do not want to assume that everyone here is in a healthy relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ it will be a costly assumption every time we're gathered like this I'm sure that there will always be one person who needs to make it right with Jesus or perhaps you have been saved but in truth um, things have gone Haywire, and you cannot say that you are in a functional relationship with Jesus right now. You've backslidden, things have gone, you know, um, wrong, but you want to make it right. Just lend me one more minute of your time. I want to make this altar call, and even if it's just for one more person, I want to give you an opportunity to truly make it right with Jesus. Remember that all of these discussions are only for those who are in Christ those who are in Christ. I'll count one to five and I want you to boldly, unashamedly leave your seat and come and stand in front of me here. I begin my counting now. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. Come. Make it right with Jesus 
and mean it from the depth of your heart as you come. You're not just coming to recite a poem. You're not just coming to ease guilt. You're coming to have a functional encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. Please come. Leave your friend, leave your neighbor. Come, come to Jesus. One more count and I begin praying. Come. Let's keep clapping as they come. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you for the boldness, the courage to come. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise despise. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And then please say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i am a child of god keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones the bible declares that when they believe they receive life even everlasting i declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god i empower you by the spirit to begin to walk in victory from today and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave indeed is broken over your life. From today, you go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Do we have counselors for our dear people? Now, may I please request that you move to my right, which will be your left. You have a few counselors who have a word with you, and you'll be back to your seat. Let's give them a big hand clap in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, RCCG. May the Lord bless you. I love you from the depth of my heart. You go from glory to glory. You go from grace to grace. In Jesus' name.